Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So this video is basically going to just round off the change events that we've been looking at in previous videos. So if you remember or if you haven't seen them already, we looked at how to ex execute a macro every time a workbook is open. So this is obviously happening automatically. How to also execute a macro when a workbook is being saved. So as you hit the save button, this macro will obviously uh, initiate straight away. And we also furthered the, uh, the saving method into going into a the ability to create a change log. So every time someone saves that workbook, we noted down their username and obviously the date at which they were saving the file. Uh, as I say, to build out a change log so you, the admin or the owner of the workbook, can see everyone who is saving and making changes to that workbook. I just wanted to round that series off by looking at another change event that is close. So that way, we all looked at then obviously how to run a macro when the workbook is open, when the workbook is saved, and then obviously when the workbook is closed. So kind of like the life cycle of someone who's going to be actually operating or working with a spreadsheet. So I must admit this is one I probably don't use as much. Um, as you'll see as we go through this example, this kind of gets um, covered off by looking at the sort of the save um, option um, but there are some good uses for it as well and as I said that really I kind of just then went back on myself and thought actually a good reason of why you'd want to use this maybe then just the save option so when it comes to using the uh, the close uh, workbook change event as with the other ones we just need to make sure we're in the this workbook within our file and obviously we're in the VBA uh, window here where we can type in our code so it's going to look exactly well not exactly the same but very much the same so we've got private uh, sub workbook underscore before close and then in brackets we're going to do cancel we spell cancel quickly as bovine there you go close brackets hit enter and you can see it's done the formatting for us so simply all I'm going to do here is well actually we'll leave it as it is for the time being so I'm just going to save the file and you can see the file is saved so when I go to close this file, because no changes have happened since I've hit save just then, I'll close the file and you can see the file just closes and nothing happens. If we go back into our change event here, and or the change event file, sorry, and then go into our macro, just doing our alt F11. This time, if I was to put this change the value of cell A1, so let's go uh, sheets, let's get rid of the capital sheets, sheet one, uh, dot range a1 dot value equals now. So it's going to literally just put a date uh, or the current date and time actually into cell a1. This time I'm going to save the file. Um, but if I was to close the file, what you'll see what happened is I close the file. It will then add the date into cell a1. And because then obviously a change has happened, it will now ask me if I want to save obviously the changes that have happened. So I'll also go yes, and it will save the file for me. So what we could do is we could take this one bit further, uh, rather than obviously having something happen, i.e. putting a value into a cell and then being asked to save, we could just do another line underneath this code and literally just put active workbook dot save. So now this time when we go to do the workbook, obviously I'll just save this again. As we close the workbook, Obviously, you'll see it published our cell value and it automatically saved the file for us. So we actually weren't asked or instructed as to whether we need to save the file because obviously we close the file, the macro is executed. Within that macro, it's obviously going to do it save the workbook as well. And therefore, it will then allow itself to then close the file having accepted those changes you've just put in. So what does that mean? So this is the real benefit of using this uh, change event of on closing the workbook. Uh, if you're trying to get something recorded every time a user goes in or you may want to just identify who the last person was to go in, this will give you the ability to do so. Um, you could also, by using um, the previous video we looked at creating the save log, you could create a closing log. And the reason you might want to capture that information is obviously there's, there's a number of times when people access a file and even though they go into the file, they might not save that file. So they could go in, read the contents and then close it without, without making any changes. 
The benefit of obviously being able to capture each person who opens the file, and obviously by storing this information when the file is closed, is it allows you to see who is actually looking at that file. So you might have this file intended for just two people to look at it, but if you notice that there a third name, I don't know, say Tim, <laughs> is um, also seeing your data, but you don't actually want Tim to be seeing the data, you actually have a change log to show that Tim has been accessing the file. So a bit of a long-winded example there, or trying to legitimize why you'd want to use this uh, but that just gives you a potential solution or not solution but a reason why this before close change event would be beneficial beneficial to you if I could even say that word so I hope you enjoyed that video uh, as I said it's kind of not too in detail um, I don't think there's any point really going in much more detail than this you know obviously from the flexibility we looked in the previous examples of change events you can add any code in here that you so wish, depending on whatever you're trying to achieve with this change event. I just wanted to include this one, uh, as I say, just so you had the full picture of being able to do the macro upon opening, saving, and also now closing that workbook. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, and obviously it would be muchly appreciated by myself, please don't forget to hit that like button. Um, obviously it's very greatly appreciated by myself, and also helps that all important YouTube algorithm to make sure that more people will find the video. Uh, and if you haven't already, or if it's your first time coming across the channel, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button. That way you'll be notified of all of our future videos as they come out. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.